then when his wife Pamela and I hooked up, um, Jim's presence was in the room with us when the two of us were together. And getting high with her was just the natural thing to do. She was into heroin. Iggy Pop was into heroin. Um, I had just done it and fallen in love with it. And it was, it was around in the early 70s, Laurel Canyon, cocaine and heroin. Two white powders were all over the place and a lot of people died. When I finished No One Here Gets Out Alive, um, first Pamela Morrison had given me information on how Jim died. And while my collaborator was doing the book before I got involved, when she told me how Jim died, she knew I knew Jerry Hopkins, who I did the book with, and she made me promise her that I wouldn't tell him what she told me. And I did promise her. I said I wouldn't ever tell anybody. No One Here Gets Out Alive was misunderstood to such an outrageous degree, and it's probably my fault. Um, by implying that there's a chance Jim might be alive, but you have to understand in No One Here Gets Out Alive, all I was doing was reporting on the versions of Jim's death that I knew of, mm -hmm. and I certainly didn't invent the rumor that Jim might still be alive. As long as I was reporting the ways that Jim died, yes, he's dead, and here's the ways he might have died, and I list the theories, I felt it was also journalistically responsible to point out, on the other hand, there are those who won't have any of this. Jim is not dead, they claim, and I have to point out that this isn't as far-fetched as it might initially seem, because mm -hmm. the guy had the exact type of personality that would stage his own death. Uh, he had the motivation to do it, he had the ability to do it, and he had the means to do it. He had the money, he had the reason, and he had the cause. He had, was up for jail time in Miami, uh, the trial was going through appeals, he had the money to do it, and he was the type of personality that would do it. I didn't think that people would conclude that he had done it. You know, the message of no one here gets out alive is not that you can stage your own death right. and move to Africa and collect royalties for the rest of your life. You live like Jim Morrison, you die like Jim Morrison. Mm -hmm. The only reason I'm still here is stupid luck. I am certainly no smarter than him. I'm certainly no stronger than him. He packed 50 years of living into, into you know, that, uh, that period uh, in the doors from 22 to 27, and he paid for it. The moral is, is that you live like Jim Morrison, you die like Jim Morrison. It was shortly after the recording of their last album that Jim Morrison took off for vacation and never came back. He moved to Paris with his girlfriend, Pamela Corson, and he died there under circumstances that have never been made clear. Do you not suggest in the book that it was Pamela who gave him the heroin that eventually led to his death? Pam was a heroin addict. I think Jim OD'd from heroin. Uh, Jim was an alcoholic. They were together in Paris. Um, Pam felt responsible for Jim's death. He probably didn't even know what it was. And like most people who do heroin uh, for the first time, he got real sick and uh, went to the bathroom to take a bath. and. The hot water, you know, the condition he was in physically, uh, knowing Jim, he was probably drunk by midnight already anyway, and uh, the heroin in concert with those, uh, those other elements did him in, and he, he never woke up.